There are places on Earth that require a unique experience to discover. You're looking good, Brian. The true beauty of these places can't be known unless you explore them on certain terms. Just hold that straight in course. I wouldn't go any more left. And while it's easy to enjoy travel to tropical destinations like this around the world, the British Virgin Islands are meant to be explored on the blue seas surrounding them by sails filled with warm breezes under a bright Caribbean sun, led to distant horizons with a voyager's heart. So I'm gonna take the GoPro camera here, jump in the water and see what we see. On this journey, I'm once again combining a little work with a lot of pleasure. <laughs> a friendcation planned and canceled several times due to a pandemic called COVID, but now a high seas adventure that's finally about to begin. Oh, We're packed in here like a bunch of sardines, but that's part of the fun. Two decked out catamarans on an eight day odyssey in one of the best places to sail on the planet. Expert is a loose term <laughs> to, de to describe what we do. A paradise of white sands, warm waters, sunrises almost too good to be true and mysteries below the surface that unlock secrets of the BBI's nautical past. Uh, we can make ceviche out of it. I'm going, I'm putting it back. Yeah. All right, free willy. Get ready to sail with a band of scallywags here for their first time. <laughs> Traveling in a way that opens up access to remote places like this. So this is your first time to the British Virgin Islands. What are you thinking right now? It's amazing where fun meets adventure and memories that last a lifetime will be made. Now, what we're doing right now is um, somewhat, I'm not gonna say nerve wracking, but we're all paying attention a lot it's right nerve -wracking. now. It's nerve wracking. It's <laughs> Just in case any Islanders yeah. out there were gonna wonder if I was a local or not, I put on puka shells to confirm that I was out of, <laughs> out of town. That is a barracuda. Oh, I tried to bite you, I saw it. When you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. When you explore with friends that share a love of photography, destinations come to life. Are you not entertained? We tell the stories of travel with our cameras, capturing images of the most beautiful places on Earth. But every adventure reveals more than what's found in the frame. The people, the food, and the unexpected turns that happen on every journey. Let him go. No, he's going downtown on you. Hang on a second. Oh. Brings the full experience of travel into focus. Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by Visit Fresno County. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. From Fresno and Clovis, you can drive to three nearby national parks by Hedrix Chevrolet. Hedrix Chevrolet is proud to support the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Adventures start here. By Advanced Beverage Company, serving Bakersfield and Kern County for over 50 years. From our family to yours, supporting Valley PBS and the wonders of travel. By the Penstar Group, promoting growth and opportunity in business through collaboration and partnerships for the future by Hodges Electric, serving California's Central Valley for over 50 years, dedicated to supporting public television and the calling in all of us to explore. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more. Looking out the window of a red-eye flight over the middle of America, reminds me that there can be some redeemable value of overnight plane travel. A central Texas thunderstorm from a perspective that gives scale to the wonders of weather and a brief reminder that the journey is the destination when we travel. After a plane change in Miami, a long awaited getaway to sail in the British Virgin Islands looked like it actually may happen now. The view of the Bahamas below on our next flight, a welcome back gift to the return of a part of the world I love to explore. From up here, a thing called COVID-19 is put into proper perspective. Our trip to sail the British Virgin Islands starts here, touching down on the US Virgin Island of St. Thomas. 
Flights directly into the British Virgin Islands themselves are possible, but fairly limited. There are many more flight options to get here if you make St. Thomas your final stop by plane and then ferry or water taxi to the BVIs from here. Zach and Dave have stayed home on this run, so I'll be shooting it with my wife Jill and our regular travel buddies that have been waiting a long time for this day to finally arrive. Rowtown is the main hub over on Tortola in the BVIs and where many of the sailing charter companies are located. A typical itinerary here includes island hopping around Tortola with overnight stops at the mooring fields tucked out of the wind, usually with a good restaurant close by. All right, so we checked out of the, the Ritz and we're kind of waiting for the taxi to show up from Dolphin Water Taxi. We chose to use a water taxi service instead of riding the Red Hook Ferry over to Roadtown. Right now, there's only one ferry running. It doesn't get over there until 4.30 in the afternoon. And that's where you go through customs and that can be kind of crowded if you get a full ferry of people. You're gonna have to stand in line while you go through customs. Water taxi is a little bit more expensive but we have our own ride over and no lines. <laughs> <laughs> Using a water taxi service like Dolphin Water Taxi takes the pressure off the run over to Tortola from St. Thomas, especially when you're moving with a large group like this. Our van will take us right to a private dock for the next phase of the adventure. I don't know what you're doing. We're packed in here like a bunch of sardines, but that's part of the fun. That's part of the fun. Right? I, I would, it is part of the fun. It's also good that it's not super humid outside today. Is that good? Yeah, no, it really is. You're wearing a tank top today. And puka shells. <laughs> that doesn't say tourists. <laughs> I wanted to, just in case any islanders out there were going to wonder if I was a local or not, I put on puka shells to confirm that I was out of, paper, not, <laughs> out of town. Right. Confirm the tour on Saturday. <laughs> Once we hit the dock, Captain Dion helps us aboard our private high speed charter, ready with some cold beverages. One of the things I love doing out here is looking at all the boats. We're, we're boat people. We love boats. We love sailboats in particular. And um, so this is a great place just to gawk at all the, all the nice, beautiful catamarans, monohulls, all the boats out here. All right, here we go. With the boat screaming on a course for Tortola, we fly past the pristine shores of St. John, another U.S. Virgin Island that actually makes up a majority of Virgin Islands National Park. Once we're out on the water, the beauty of this place begins to ease the fatigue of long travel days to get here as island vibes slowly sneak in. But because we're on a Miami Vice rocket run, we hit the West End Ferry Building fast for a quick COVID screening, passport check, and then back on the water to Roadtown, where all the work in getting here is about to pay off. The crew at Dolphin Water Taxi made what can be a rough part of this journey a total Caribbean breeze. So here we are in Road Town, pulling up. Yeah, it doesn't have Dolphin to Water Taxi, Captain Dion, uh, safely delivering us two conch charters here, right behind me over here. And we just cleared customs, which was really easy with COVID protocols, no problem on that. Pulling into uh, this beautiful fleet of uh, charter boats that Conch Charters operates here. We're gonna get on board get checked out on the boat, and we'll be camping here for the night. As you can tell, a lot of work goes into the front side of a trip like this. I've sailed with conch charters before and love their team. You can hire a captain to take you out on one of their boats for the week, or like us, if you know just enough to be dangerous and can sail on your own, do a bear boat charter to enjoy these welcoming waters at your own pace. While the Conk Charters team gets the boat ready, it's time to run next door to the local grocery store to get provisions for the voyage. Lots of pulp, some pulp, no pulp. I am not gonna lie. This part of the trip is my least favorite thing. Planning and buying enough stuff for eight days on the water with all these people on board can be overwhelming. So really doing a solid pre-plan on provisioning is highly recommended, something we didn't do. Provisioning. Yep. Provisioning. I'm going to follow you right in. Okay, the, follow me in. Now you're doing the, absolutely nothing now. Except shooting a TV show. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Which really isn't that hard. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> After a quick check out on the boat and going over our travel plans with Conk Charter's expert staff, we are finally ready to set sail and get this trip underway. We're going to watch out for the channel markers. We're going to hit green. Green is out. With more than half the day already gone, 
we head for Norman Island, just across the main channel, to grab a ball in a mooring area called the Bight. So this is your first time to the British Virgin Islands. What are you thinking right now? It's amazing, just beautiful. The water's crystal blue. It is so clear. We've got these, we're, we're right up next to Norman Island here. We've got the jungle right up to the boat. This is the end of day one. We have eight more days to go, so um, we have a lot of the islands to see and a lot of water to cover, and it's gonna be great. But right now, we're over there staring at one of the most famous places in the uh, British Virgin Islands. It's a, it's a boat called the Willie T. And for those who know, you know. Going aboard the world famous Willie T is a BVI rite of passage and perhaps one of the top things to check off on a list of things to do here. It's a kind of floating bar and restaurant that draws the cruising crowd in like a moth to a flame and will definitely put an island smile on your face. It does not take long for the rum drinks to start flowing here and a little liquid courage to coax our crowd to take the famous plunge into the Caribbean Sea from the back deck of the Willie T. After getting our Willie T on, it's time to slow it down for a nice beachside dinner at the Pirate's Bite on Norman Island. Most of our overnight stops on this trip will have great dining close to the boat, which is how we like to do it after a long day on the water. The next morning, we drop the ball at the Bite on Norman Island and set out on the first real test of sailing our 48-foot leopard catamaran named the Katmandu to one of the most popular islands in the BVI's, Jos Van Dyke. This part of the world is famous for sailing due to its consistently reliable winds that blow from the east. And since these islands are so close together, there isn't a predominant swell that you typically get out on the open sea. After a fun two-hour sail to the north, we approach the gorgeous blue waters off the coast of Jos Van Dyke. Keep checking the sails, mains full. Now for the most part, sailing is a relaxing endeavor, but where things can get stressful, especially for people new to sailing and on a huge boat that technically belongs to someone else, tying up to the mooring ball can be a tricky job. All right, Brian, you're doing great, by the way. Brian, what Brian's doing is we've got the wind kind of blowing in from this angle right now, and we're in tight. There's a lot of extra boats around here. So we've got a boat here. Let me show you on this side. I'm trying to be really careful because we've got a boat. We've got a boat right here, right behind us here. We don't want to hit that. We got a boat there, and we got a boat over here. And uh, Brian is doing a great job of backing this thing into the wind, and then we're going to turn, and we're going to try to pick up that ball right there. Since we're so close to shore and within eye shot of another famous hangout on Joss Van Dyke, Ivan's Bar, we launch the dinghies and head for white sands and cold drinks. Good, right there. It's gonna be about, it's gonna be about that deep. All right. Exploring the islands like this gives you the same kind of experience you get on a road trip. Traveling at your own pace, stopping to check out whatever you want, whenever you want, and stay in a place like Ivan's as long as you want. The whole point of this kind of a trip is to not stick to any plan or hard schedule. When you're hungry, eat. When you're thirsty, drink. When you're tired, take a nap. And when you want to play in the waves with an island kid and crush him under your own body weight in the surf, you can do that too. You're okay, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. No local children were injured in the filming of this episode. begins over the British Virgin Islands with a morning paddleboard to shore and a walk on the beach. Two of my best friends on this planet, brothers Mark and Brian Biglione, sneak away from the boat to spend some quality brother time together on the shores of this island paradise. Mm -hmm. 
since we're having such a blast on Joss Van Dyke, we decide to stay a second day on island, but move over one cove to Great Harbor, which has better protection from the wind and is home to another famous BVI hotspot, Foxy's. It's also no coincidence that we found ourselves in this exact spot on Halloween night, so we could experience Foxy's legendary island costume party. The food at Foxy's is great, and the fun regularly had here, especially on a night like Halloween, will not be forgotten. Or as it turned out the next morning for most of us, will not be remembered. Okay, so we're up on a Monday morning, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, no. <laughs> we're up on a Monday morning, the day after Halloween at Foxy's, which was fun, we had a good time there last night. Now what we're doing right now is um, somewhat, I'm not gonna say nerve wracking, but we're all paying attention a lot it's right now. It's nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> we, are, we are bringing uh, the Kathmandu into a dock for the first time. So right now the winds are pretty light to variable. Um, we think we know what we do, we're doing here. Brian's we've been doing a good job of We've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. That so, helps. So we're checked out. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're bringing this 48-foot beautiful leopard in very carefully. Thank you. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Get your empanada, empanada and a valentine, your breakfast sandwich. We had the empanada yesterday. Did you make that for us? That was awesome. When the sails are up and filled, you're not, of course, using the twin diesel engines for propulsion, so you conserve a lot of fuel. This is the starboard tank, which we think is the emptier one, which with the gap, see? But we do burn some diesel running the generator that powers the air conditioning and water pumps on board. And with two big days of heading directly into the wind plant, where we will be only using the Kathmandu's engines, topping off the tanks and taking on a few more supplies is the plan before today's voyage. Right next to the ferry dock, sugar and spice. <laughs> Please, Thank you. you. Sailing east along the north shore of Tortola on a perfect Caribbean day. The plan is to stop for some lunch and snorkeling at a place called Monkey Point before heading on to grab a ball for the night at Marina Key. Okay, so I've cut the motors back on Kathmandu and we're pulling into. Um, a national park on Guana Island, which is just north of Tortola Island. And this is uh, a really popular place to come snorkeling called Monkey Point. And so we're kind of slowing down, we're lining up the ball, and uh, I'm gonna let Brian come up and get us on the ball, he's really good at that. And um, we're gonna do some snorkeling here, I think it's gonna be beautiful. I was really looking forward to snorkeling here. Monkey Point is one of the rock star spots in the BVIs for diving and snorkeling. But a stubborn north swell out of the Atlantic churned these typically crystal clear waters into a salty soup of sand, and the current here was really tough to swim in. Coming to Monkey Point, we did spot an amazing looking white sand beach on Guana Island. This is a private island owned by one family that operates a very exclusive resort frequented by celebrities and elite travelers but access to this beach is allowed by boat for the rest of us. As we approach by dinghy through the gentle waves, the beauty of this place captures us all. Having access to such an exclusive location, free of crowds or any other sign of civilization, is another special part of a sailing experience like this. Most of Guana Island is a natural preserve, and a long walk on this white powder sand beach will be one of my favorite memories of this entire trip. The quiet times on a big adventure like this bring balance to the experience. And of all the places I've been lucky enough to film sunrises around the world in, daybreak here in the BVIs is in a class all its own. Today's run is the most ambitious part of the entire trip for us. It's where we leave the main island group of the BVIs behind to sail to the distant British Virgin Island of Anagata, almost 22 miles away. While most of the crew is still asleep, 
Brian, Mark, and I are eager to get going since this will be our biggest leg of the trip and it's into somewhat open water, unprotected from the islands with strong storms forecasted for the day. Yeah, ready, drop it. Okay, you heard it right there. Captain Brian just said drop it, which means we're dropping the ball here on Monday, no, Tuesday morning. Uh, we just spent the night right off of Marina Key, which is right behind me here, this little island just next to Scrub Island over here. And you can see we've got some weather today. So we're watching that. In fact, off in the distance back there, I don't even see that behind me, but it's just dumping rain right back here. Just really super localized downpour, but that's what we're going to be dealing with today. Sorry for the sleepy eyes. I just woke up a little while ago. Looking good here. Okay, Brian's got forward power, so now he knows where he's going. We'll go back up to the helm. And we've got our route uh, punched into Navionics right now. They'll take us out. So basically, we're going to hit the start button right now. And off we go. Once we clear the main island group and get into deeper water, we set the autopilot for Anagata, the engines at 2,000 RPMs, and settle in for the two and a half hour run to the most distant British Virgin Island. Okay. This is a great spot to troll some saltwater plugs behind Kathmandu since fishing really picks up offshore. Yeah, you do. You got a skipjack. You got a little skipjack. Little skipjack, little skipjack. Mark's got one. Oh, we got a double hookup. Double hookup. Look at him, he's laying into it. He's pulling the lift right off that sucker. <laughs> I, we can make ceviche out of it. I'm going, I'm putting it back. Yeah. All right, free willy. Where are the players? That one will bite you. Look at that. That is a barracuda. Oh, I'm trying to bite you. I saw it. He's got a good dental plan. After a few hours making the cross to Anagata, we grab a mooring in a place popular with cruisers and home to a few of the best places to eat fresh lobster in the BVI's, something Anagata is known for. I want to see him cut one. Oh, I'm so savage. Anagata was hit hard when Hurricane Irma made a direct strike on the BVI's in September of 2017. The aftermath of the devastation is still seen all around the islands. Looks like a little rebuild going on there. Hurricane Irma remnants. But now, businesses and tourism are back, and a great way to see Anagata is by scooter, touring the North Shore bars and hangouts. Okay, so we are now on scooters. Checking it out, riding, having a good time. Armed with an array of rented scooter bikes, this motley crew sets out on the open road, just as the skies open up with a late morning downpour. But this will not stop us from making it to one of Anagata's legendary haunts at Cowreck Beach. This landmark destination sits on the sands of Anagata's north coast and is the perfect place to chill out and watch the waves break in the distance on Anagata's barrier reef. After Cowrec, we saddle up again for the short ride up to another top spot to relax at the Anagata Beach Club. Here, you can jump in the pool to wash off the trail dust while grabbing a bite to eat and sipping something cold before heading back to the boat. It's nice to break up all the time on the boat with a fun day exploring Anagata Island. And even though another pretty big storm hits us as we get back into town, nothing can damper the spirits of a trip like this with close friends in such a beautiful place. After another sunrise to remember, and favorable winds ready to fill the sails of Kathmandu for the run back to the main island group of the BVIs, we set a course for Virgin Gorda. This adventure was one planned for a long time and canceled on several occasions due to the pandemic. And now, after reflecting on a trip we took in early November of 2021, and remembering some of the other stops we made, like exploring the rock grottos of a place called the Baths on Virgin Gorda, or snorkeling on the wreck of the RMS Rhone that sunk during a hurricane in 1867, the British Virgin Islands hold a special place in my heart.
The seascapes of the Caribbean are soft and approachable. The harshness and unforgiving nature of oceans found elsewhere on Earth give way to a warmth found in the winds, waters, and people here. To know this place better, you need to take a deeper look. As time runs out on adventures like this, and courses are set for home, we realize there is still so much to see. Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by Visit Fresno County. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. From Fresno and Clovis, you can drive to three nearby national parks by Hedrix Chevrolet. Hedrix Chevrolet is proud to support the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Adventures start here. By Advanced Beverage Company, serving Bakersfield and Kern County for over 50 years. From our family to yours, supporting Valley PBS and the wonders of travel. By the Penstar Group, promoting growth and opportunity in business through collaboration and partnerships for the future. By Hodges Electric, serving California's Central Valley for over 50 years. Dedicated to supporting public television and the calling in all of us to explore. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more. <laughs>